Now, here's a cool thing about ng repeat that you may not notice unless you kind of dig into it. So with the ng controller, I told you how Angular creates a scope object, which is a child of the parent scope object. So you essentially have a new scope object every time you have something like ng controller. Turns out Angular creates new scope objects for not just ng controller, it actually does that for a few more things. It actually creates a new scope object for something like ng if. And guess what? It creates a new scope object for ng repeat. And why would it create scope objects for these things? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to open the inspector here and uh, expand the ng controller. Now here you see there are these ng repeats, which are basically new elements that are added to the HTML. Your original HTML contained just one div with a couple of paragraph tags in it. What Angular has done is it's taken that div and it's stamped out multiple copies depending on how many elements you had in your array. So here it's created these bunch of div elements. Now what's interesting to know is that in each of these elements, Angular is actually creating a new scope, all right? This is one scope, this is another scope, this is another scope and so on. And actually here's a clue which lets you know when Angular is creating a scope. Every time Angular creates a scope for an element, it adds this class equals ng-scope to that element, right? What do we typically use class for? We use it for styling, right? You have a CSS element, class, and then you apply it to an element. ng-scope is not CSS driven. There's no styling that ng-scope is applying. This is, however, Angular giving us a clue that it's actually creating a new scope object for each iteration of this ng repeat. Here ng repeat is happening six times. For each ng repeat element, Angular is actually creating a new scope. Why would it need to create a new scope? Angular creates a new scope because you're using this loop counter over here, a loop variable called obj. obj needs to be a part of a scope object as with everything else in Angular, right? So we are basically referring to scope objects over here. Now, obj cannot be a part of the main controller scope. Why not? Because unlike a traditional for loop where let's say you have a var i equals zero, i less than some number, i is the same variable that contains different values at different points of time. For the first loop, i contains the value zero, second loop, i contains the value one and so on. So it's the same variable, but multiple values at different points of time. However, with an ng repeat, that does not apply because in ng repeat, it's not a variable that contains multiple values. It's actually multiple copies of the same variable. So obj contains the value of the first object in this div. obj contains the value of the second object in this div and so on. And all these objects exist simultaneously, right? All these different repetitions exist simultaneously. So it's not separated by time. So there naturally has to be multiple obj objects right, since they're all happening in parallel. So the way Angular solved this problem is by having multiple scope objects, each scope object having a property called obj. So what Angular does when it sees an ng repeat is, it creates one scope object for each repetition. And once it creates a scope object, it puts a property on that scope object, which is your loop variable. So here is one scope object on which obj is a property and that's gonna contain the first element. Here's another scope object, again, having a property obj, it's gonna contain the second element and so on. So that's the reason why there are multiple scope objects, one for each repetition. Now that Angular is creating these multiple scopes, it actually uses those scope objects to populate some other handy stuff. So there are loop variables that it uses, which can be handy depending on what you're doing. Here are a bunch of variables that you get in that scope object for that element that you're using. So you have a variable called dollar $index, which is basically the iterator numbers. It starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. You have a dollar $first, which is a Boolean, which is true for the first iteration, and it's not true for the rest. There's middle, which is true for the middle element, and last, which is true for the last element. And you also have even and odd, which alternate between the different adjacent scopes. So I'm gonna demonstrate this by using some of these things. So I have obj.name over here, but now I'm going to create another paragraph here, which says element counter. So I, I want to say element one, element two, and so on. 
how do I get hold of that? I get hold of this by using this hidden variable called dollar $index. So this is a counter that Angular populates for each scope element that it creates. For the first scope element that it creates, Angular populates this with zero. The second scope element, Angular populates it with one and so on. So let's refresh the page. There are all these different properties called dollar $index on each of these scopes. All right, so for each scope, it has some value. For the, obviously, for the first one, it has the value zero. For the second one, it has the value one, and so on. I could, of course, add a plus one to this to make it a serial number. And now it starts from one, two, and so on. So I can add more stuff here. Let's say first is dollar first. And again, Angular is going to have this value set to true for the very first scope object, and it's going to be false for the rest. Well, there you go. It's true for the first one, and it's false for all the rest. And you can, of course, play around with the other variables that I've shown you, and they can do what it says in the tin. The thing to remember, though, again, is that these are not the same variables uh, that are changing over time. These are copies of variables, and the way Angular achieves this copy is by having multiple scope objects, one for each iteration.